Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've got some big Star Citizen now for 3.22 updates, improvements to salvage, new settlements, and the inventory boxes are now ready for testing. We'll look into that in a second. And we have details of what is happening with this week in Star Citizen. Alpha 3.22 has launched to PTU Wave 1. It will be going out to more audiences, a wider audience soon. Luminalia, which is Star Citizen Christmas, is going to kick off next week. And CIG have some fantastic stuff planned apparently for this holiday season. The Siege of Orison, that is continuing on the live servers, so 3.22.1 until the 7th of December at 4pm UTC and you could expect a return of Jump Town that was running last week in the near future. Alpha 3.22, for example, adds at least one more Jump Town location into the mix. CIG have put out the full broadcast of day one at CitizenCon, if you want to watch that 5.5 hour long video. Day two will be available on Friday as well. The Daymar Rally is taking sign-ups. This is a fan famous rally event across, you know, Daymar. Um, the rally itself, I believe, is on the 20th of January, 2024, and you can watch it live on Twitch, but you can obviously sign up and actually participate if you wish yourself. You can grab yourself a downloadable Intergalactic Aerospace Expo event program from the latest IAE, which is cool, but something you'd normally get before an event, but I did actually like what they did with it this year. Um, and being able to print one out, you could potentially make it into a prop. What else is happening this week? So this Tuesday, we've got a um, update to the subscriber program. They're going to be releasing a newsletter uh, and all that sort of jazz as well for subscribers. But um, yeah, there's some sort of update to the subscriber program, which we will cover once we know exactly what it is. Thursday, we've got Inside Star Citizen, which is going to be talking about structural salvage. This should go into a lot more of why they decided to make it quite simplistic as a feature, at least at this stage. They also have a Q&A coming out for the RSI Arastra, which is the new concept sort of Corvette sized versatile miner. On Friday, there's apparently no Star Citizen Live because they are trying to get 3.22 out the door as quick as they can and, and plow through that because it's very close to their holiday break. There will be a patch watch post though, so these go into some um, of the sort of features and details of a patch that aren't necessarily appearing on the public roadmap. Sort of typically more minor features, which can have some quite major consequences for the game. Experimental modes on the live build that are available at the moment. So until the 10th of December, you can play single weapon elimination with the railgun in FPS, pew pew pew. Um, I suppose it's more pew, pew, pew and mirror match duel, which is a best of three dog fighting using the same loadout in the fury. Uh, from the 10th of December to the 17th, there's Gun Rush and Tank Royale. Alpha 3.22 updates. There's been a new PTU patch. Uh, it's in Wave 1 still, but they're going to be moving to wider audiences, Wave 2, Wave 3, relatively soon. In the new patch, inhabited derelict settlements are now ready for testing and feedback. So this is the inclusion of 15 new derelict settlements with both mission gameplay, social elements, and shops. These new inhabited settlements are spread throughout the wilderness of Hurston and Microtech using the Rastar tool with a larger expanded new library of new and existing assets. Some locations, you can see these on the star map. You can plot them uh, as a location and travel to them. Um, some are more discreet, but you will be able to find them either by just knowing where they are or because you'll be able to get missions for them. And then you'll be able to travel to those locations because you'll see them when you have a mission there. All NPCs at these locations are neutral, making up a population of independent civilians and members of the Dusters faction and have been updated to use the new hair tech and faction clothing. There's also been an updated hair art and geometry polish pass globally too. There are eight new Hurston locations. Zephyr, Maker's Point, uh, Ludlow, Pickersfield, Finn's Folly, Weeping Cave, Cutter's Rig, and Rappel. Seven new Microtech locations. These include Frostbite, Razor's Edge, Bloodshot Ridge, Harper's Point, Astor's Clearing, Moorland Hills, and Dunborough. However, I want to warn players, performance at some of these locations, especially when approaching them, is near unplayable still. Big pauses between single digit frames at lots of these areas. Currently, most of the feedback is going to be help performance, oh god, my computer, but these will get vastly optimised over the next few days, almost certainly. There's also new inventory openable cargo containers. So 3.22 adds openable cargo containers, 
allowing players to be able to store commodities and items in them. These new 1, 2, 4 and 8 SU containers can be purchased and sold through shops and dropped from your location inventory into your ship cargo grid. The containers allow contents to be sold individually as well as the container themselves, in which case any unsold contents will be sent to the inventory container it is being held in. So typically you're going to want to sell the contents, but not the containers most of the time. This also includes work for tractor beams that will make it so cargo is locked onto cargo grids when the ship is locked by the door integrity, meaning as long as the integrity is sufficient, cargo cannot be removed from cargo grids except by the owner or party members. If you steal someone's cargo in a monitored zone, that is a crime. Structural Salvage has received a balance pass. A lot of people had been concerned of how simplistic the structural salvage was. They were expecting a bit more from the mechanics. But Cloud Imperium basically said, look, we are at this stage putting it in very simply, and this is steps towards what we want. And once we have the Maelstrom tech and the ability to break ships down in a bit of a better way, then we're going to evolve this even further. The structural salvage in game is functional and allows you to basically go deeper into salvage and clear up ships. Functional, useful, makes you more money, just very basic. The overall balance pass is to put structural salvage earnings more in line with what's intended at this step. So this update will increase the base amount of time it takes to run the disintegration and fracturing, reduce the amount of construction materials gained, and reduce the internal storage buffer of the Reclaimer to 140 SCU and the Vulture to 12 SCU. Along with this comes another mechanic to slightly offset those changes to be more skill based. So this includes an alignment field that reduces the time it takes for disintegration as well as giving more material depending on the distance that the player is from the ideal spot. Um, there's also been a salvage UI and VFX polish pass. The Hull A has been removed from salvage pool missions temporarily. Um, there are some additional salvage updates that are coming to structural salvage that Clan Imperium said would potentially be in in the next couple of days and they're working on further. So this is further updates to the amount of construction material gained based on position in the alignment field and UI updates to help you find the sweet spot for fracturing and disintegration and just other associated features that they're just going to be refining and improving. CIG say the intention here is to make it more attractive to either position your ship or make use of the tractor beam. This will make the Reclaimer more viable again for multi-crew gameplay. Since they're still actively working on this, the values for time to fracture, disintegration, and the amount of construction material generated are subject to change. And obviously in the, this most recent PTU update patch, they have um, done some changes towards uh, a better sort of structural salvage gameplay loop. I had some time to think about what I actually thought about the new salvage mechanics and yeah they, they are a bit too basic for me but they are they're more than we had and they allow cleanup of ships in the verse which is actually very useful allow you to make more money allow you to use these salvage ships the vulture and especially the reclaimer to a much larger degree I do want more and we will get more once we have the sort of maelstrom tech the ship breaking apart tech and as they evolve the mechanics there there is going to be more um, finesse to this Boom! That's it for your Star Citizen updates this week in Star Citizen and Alpha 3.22. Yeah, um, I'm keen for that to go out to more people, 3.22, before it gets to live. We're expecting a live release before the end of the year. Uh, Zin very much thinks that we're actually only going to get an open PTU by the end of the year. It is going to be dependent on how the sort of PTU phase goes and how ready they are to release it or not. I'm really interested to know your experiences with Alpha 3.22 if you've been playing. Are you expecting this to be live by the end of the year? Have you been playing in the Siege of Orison? At the moment, I've got terrible internet problems, which is reducing my ability to play Star Citizen, um, play in the live builds, and even upload my videos, can't stream and that sort of stuff. Hopefully it will be solved within the next couple of weeks. What do you think of Structural Salvage? Do you think it's too basic? Do you not really mind? Do you think it's just adding more to the game? Are you looking forward to Luminalia that starts next week? And do you hope there's lots of cool freebies and stuff in the 12 days of Luminalia like they do with the advent calendar every year? Whatever your thoughts or questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Ho ho ho, it's me, Father Nordmus. That's right, it's that time again to see who's on my naughty list for who doesn't have a VPN. Ah, uh, no, that's Northern Claus. Gross from Northern Claus, Timmy. You should be scared of not having a VPN. 
As you know, Father Nordmus punishes all that disobey him. It's the perfect Nordmus present, Timmy. There's no excuse. I can see all of your website history, and I'm going to sell all of your data, Tim. NordVPN helps protect your online activity, gives you greater accessibility to the content you want by changing your location, and much, much more. Go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer before Das Nordenclaws finds you. Every month we have a Star Citizenship giveaway. For December, we are giving away a Drake Corsair. It's the winner of the 2953 Ship Showdown and one of the stars of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. This fantastic multi-role, multi-crew, long-range mission runner can do a bit of everything in-game and it has a penchant for exploration. Just comment on any of my videos during December to be in for a chance of winning that. There are further details in the description below. A big thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile in supporting the channel via Patreon or the join button under my videos and becoming a channel member. It will net you some exclusive content from Zin and I, but also it really does help us to be able to create daily Star Citizen content, as does sharing these videos and commenting. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the verse.